Hey everybody, I'm Ernie Hatmaker and I'm going to show you how to can the best immunity booster ever. this tea that I'm going to be making, I am going to be using five lemons, a decent size uh, um, ginger. You don't have to use it all, but honestly, you know, get as much, you know, as you can. This is at least a good, oh, I don't know, maybe man hands, <laughs> palm size. Um, I got a little bit extra because I'm gonna put like a little more than, than what normal people would use because I like a little stronger taste and I want it to still be potent you know if it's sitting on the shelf for more than two years this broke off so man it smells good good and fresh honey and this is um, 32 ounces and I'm probably not gonna use all of it I'm, I'm probably gonna use about maybe 25 ounces so almost all of it and garlic now this says it's, you know, um, I don't know. This feels like about five cloves and I'm actually going to chop it a little bit. I'm not gonna leave this whole, it'll at least be chopped in half. Got a knife, cutting board, a little spatula to tuck my lemon slices down into the jar because I wanna leave them whole. So if you haven't already, go ahead and wash your lemon slices. <laughs> your lemon slices, wash your lemons. I don't pretend to be a cooking teacher. I know it works for us, and I'm just gonna show you what we do. I've got my jars just uh, sitting. Um, the water the water temperature is only about 200 degrees because I didn't turn it any higher than that on the oven. I have some water that I have boiled, and it's kind of cooling down a little bit, and that's actually going to go inside the jars. So I'm just gonna kinda dip it inside and pour it in. If you have a funnel, that's great. You really don't need one, but you know, you do what you wanna do. I have water that's heating up right now inside the canner and it's not heating like it would be if I was, you know, doing a, um, a hot pack. This is more like a warm pack. If you have hot water from the tap, that's fine as long as it's, you know, fairly warm so that it doesn't mess up what you're doing down there, which this was heated to um, 190 degrees, so you, I can touch them. And that's just because they're gonna go into the canner that's not heated all the way. This is a 921 All-American canner, and I have it almost filled to the field line that um, is recommended by my manufacturer. If you peel your ginger, that's totally fine. If, if you have a measuring cup, that's fine. You can use that for, you know, pouring out your water. But I honestly just don't feel like getting one out and messing it up. <laughs> the fewer the better. So I've got fairly warm jars and I'm putting them on the table. Just going to give my ginger a few uh, rough chops and I'm going to do this for all of them but I'm just kind of showing you and now there's a fly here it's like mm, that smells good already man this smells good already it really does so I'm just going to take this ginger and I'm gonna take my jar no I'm not the lemon slices go first okay so I'm just going to get that out of the way there's really nothing to that. That'll go into the compost later. I can reach my little bag over there. All right. Now the lemon slices don't have to be thick. They don't have to be super thin because we're pressure canning and it doesn't really matter. They do have to fit inside the jar. Now, if you wanna leave seeds in, 
you can, but I mean, the seats really serve no purpose, no purpose at all, not really. So, you know, take out as many as you want but it's really a lot easier to just put it all in there and let it sort itself out. Most people are going to strain their soup, uh, soup, their tea anyway, and look, perfect fit. All right, so I've got a lemon sliced and I'm going to put more than one slice in there. You see it's kind of like, I don't wanna go. Yeah, and that's why you need your spatula that came either with your canning set or you need to buy a flat piece to kind of push that lemon all the way down to where you don't have any air. You can slice the lemon up a little more if you want. You can slice it up a little more, it'll shrink. And I'm just gonna drop that in there. And then next, see this uh, ginger here that I coarse chopped? That's three or four pieces. Um, actually, I think that's four pieces. And then next, which I need to open the honey, because I have not. All right, got my honey open. And see how much I'm going to put in here? I'm just going to squeeze the honey over this. All right, now we've got we've got our uh, line filled up to about right there. I'm gonna add a little bit more honey because it doesn't look like it covered it all the way. And then I'm just going to break open the garlic. If you want to grate it, you can. The garlic is sitting on top of the honey, but it really won't matter. Whatever order you put it in, as long as your lemon slices go first, because you want your lemon to kind of sit on the bottom instead of float around on top. It just, it just looks more aesthetically appealing. It really doesn't matter. Warm water. Fill it up the rest of the way. And that's what it looks like. Now I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to show every single slice and every single dice, but basically I've got some warm water and I don't even have a funnel. I've got one, but I'm not using it. Empty jar, lemon slice, which I need two. sharpen my thing. I'm not worried about seeds and I'm just going to drop these lemon slices into the bottom. Make sure that they, you know, go all the way down and there's not really a lot of air and that just saves time later. I'm going to take some ginger, which I have some chopped right here coarsely, but I'm going to take some more and ginger, you know, good healthy ginger will just pop right off couple that I want to coarse chop. There's four that I kind of coarse chopped and I'm going to drop them in there. And then I'm going to take a, a little bit of garlic, cover it up. Pretty much cover everything. This might be um, about a quarter of a cup of honey. Titan. So what if you're saying to yourself, I don't have time for all that shredding and all that. That's fine. You see what I did to the lemon down there? You can literally chop it just like this. Just rough chop everything. I just quartered it and I put it in the bottom just like that. And the thing is canning it You'll want it to sit a little bit longer than before you drink it. I mean, that, that's about it. You'll get some of the benefit from it, but it'll take a little longer for the nutrients to leach out into the water. So unless you're planning on chewing the lemon or whatever, you just let it sit longer. 
I mean, I even quartered the ginger. And if you stay with me in about two weeks, I will drink that and show you. The taste will be about the same as it would have been if you were shredding it. The potency would be good. Okay, so I'm putting the last lid on right now and I'm going to put these in the canner. Now that's my canner, it's all full. I have an All American 921 and mine has all the extra little safety latches and whatnot. Um, depending on where you live, make sure that you um, look at your altitude. If you're below 1,000 feet, then you're pretty much going to use what I'm using. I'm below 1,000 feet, therefore I'm going to use um, 10 PSI because I have a weighted gauge. If you don't have a weighted gauge and you just have a dial, then you're, you're going to use 11. See that, see that 10 there? You're just gonna go one up and you'll do 11 PSI. If you have a weighted gauge, which I do, this is, a, this is what a weighted gauge looks like. And it has, you know, the, the pressure on it, at least mine does, where you can see the 10 or the five or the 15. Now, if you're above 1,000 feet in altitude, you're gonna do 15. You're gonna do 15 PSI. And I'm not going to put my weighted gauge, which I would put it right here when it's time, but I'm not gonna put it on yet because it has not risen in pressure at all. So of your altitude, if you use these half pints or a pint jar, which that'll be a lot of tea, <laughs> then you would use 20 minutes. See when it gets to the point. You can see it up there. That steam, that steam coming from my little vent there. So my water temperature is gonna start going up. All right, my pressure's going up steadily. It's where I am comfortable putting on my weighted gauge, which I will do and make sure that I put it on the 10 side. See that? I can barely see it. Anyway, here we go. Once you put it on, there's no going back. You either have to turn the canner off and start over, or put it on. There we go. Now watch the pressure gauge and how fast it goes up now that that weighted gauge is on there. That, PS, that PSI geared gauge is going to go up. We're gonna watch this in real time. Sorry that my hand's a little bit shaky. I, I could actually put this on the tripod, but I'm not going to. See that hand going up? Now remember, if you've got the regular dial and you don't have the weighted gauge, you're gonna go to 11. And again, if you are over a thousand feet, you're going to 15, which if you had a weighted gauge, you would have put it on the 15 instead of the 10. Now this is actually my mom's stove. So um, I'm kind of out of my element over here. I chose this um, kitchen because it's a lot bigger. It's bigger than mine, so 
But yeah, there's no clock over here. The microwave is over by the sink. So I can't see the clock. I'm going to have to um, get my trusty, dusty phone and I'll keep a timer that way. See that? It's going to start kind of rattling a little bit as it gets closer. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn the, the heat down. But I want you to see what it does when it gets to the, the desired pressure, which is 10. See how it's starting to rattle? It'll go clank, 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 clank. And in a bit when it's going to go over 10. That's the benefit of having the weighted gauge. See, it's on 10 exactly. Now, if I don't turn the heat down, it's going to go over. another reason it's really important for you to make sure you have all the safety measures in place that's the main factor of this with the all-american 921 and and i think all the all-americans have these extra latches the latch features here okay i'm going over a little bit let me turn that down going to try to keep that at 10. Time to turn it off. We'll watch that temperature gauge start going down. Just let it lose pressure on its own. And it'll probably take 10-15 um, minutes um, before it'll even, you know, cool but before I take my weighted gauge off I'm gonna let it go all the way back to zero if you take your weighted gauge off before you lose your pressure all the way down to zero you're pretty much gonna pop your lids <laughs> or worse your jars so go ahead and be safe and just let it drop on its own still dropping and my weighted gauge is still on I'm still not at zero so it's still not safe to take off my weighted gauge this is what time it is 10 minutes and the pressure is not at zero yet this is definitely a patience game don't rush to take it off all right, I'm now at zero, and I'm going to grab a paper towel um, and fold it over a couple times because I don't want to go through my mom's drawers and get a, an oven mitt, but this thing is very hot, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the weighted gauge, and then I'm gonna let the steam come out. Hear that? That's the steam. That also tells you it's not safe yet to open up this thing so we're gonna let that go ahead and and air out some people do it for two minutes that's the the basic safety uh, regulation for this particular pressure cooker also that was what was in my instruction book is go ahead and let that vent for two minutes and that's what I'm gonna do the rule of thumb though if you don't have one of those books that says two minutes um, Make sure you don't hear any more steam going or if you can see the water coming out when it's no longer bubbling out of it. That's usually a good rule of thumb that says that the steam has been vented. 
because what you don't want is to to open this thing up and have a face full of steam and this is about 200 degrees so it's going to be a big temperature drop for my jars and i'm just going to kind of let them acclimate and i'll come back when the water's cooled down a little bit and we'll test our jars now if you notice all i've done is i've taken my lid off and i've pretty much cracked it so that more steam is coming out but mainly so that I can let the temperature inside the canner kind of acclimate to the temperature outside. If acclimate is the right word. And I'm gonna come back in a few minutes and, and I'll get my jars out. I have removed my lid. I heard a couple of them popping in there and I'm gonna get them out. If you don't have any jar grabbers, just kind of wait until uh, the jars are completely cool and then get you know get them out like that They're actually still boiling in there now this is what they look like coming out you can see the honey is lining the bottom right now the coloration is not a straight brownish color it will be you can also hear um the lids starting to seal they're starting to pop that is what you want you want to hear the pop 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 <laughs> there's a few more that still haven't done it yet and that's why you let them sit um i would drink it for you but honestly it is way too hot to pick up one of these jars without that jar grabber so I'm going to let these sit for 24 hours, although I am going to come back in a few hours and check my seals. So I checked all my lids, every one of them sealed. This is the next day and I'm actually canning some other stuff today. So I hope you stick around. Uh, maybe in the next couple videos, I'll show myself drinking one of them and let you know you can drink this and it is awesome. See you around.